how's life treating you so far this year? It's been good. Um, you know, off season is always kind of funny because you're trying to figure out what all, you know, you want, obviously you want to get better at a lot of things. Um, where do you want to put your time emphasis? Uh, I always like to try to like follow a story kind of narrative for like our off season, you know, who we are. Um, so kind of diving in that really for the culture, you know, for, for our culture stuff. And, um, it's been really productive. I'll say that. I, I think that, um, you know, going into year three, you feel obviously feel a lot better. And sometimes I have to put it into perspective, like where we came from when I got here and, you know, how far we've come. Cause you know, there's times where you do get frustrated with some little things that you deal with, but you know, it takes time. And that's, that's something I've learned is like patience and, and trust in the process. Yeah. Well, you mentioned, I mean, culture was kind of the big thing I wanted to talk to you about this. Like I used to live in Moody. I had a cousin who played at Moody in like the late nineties, maybe something like that. Who's a, a pretty good player on a yeah. really bad team, you know, like Moody's success over the years is, you know, few and far between other than like, yeah. it was 2004, maybe they won nine games, but y'all go, right. y'all go back to back 10 win seasons. Um, how important is culture to you and how do you kind of build it? And then specifically now building to this 411 day, tell me, tell me about that. So, I mean, I, I think culture, I know a lot of coaches, you know, say the word and, and believe it, but don't necessarily, um, you know, truly live by it. I think culture is like, it's who you are daily um, you know, characters, what you do when no one's watching, right? Well, your culture is like everything that encompasses your day, a part of a program as far as like coaches in the locker room, but we're policing and we're picking up trash. We're making sure everything's done, right? It's coach said, hey, open weight room on Saturday. That's voluntary, but really it's mandatory, you know, like, so like those like little things, it's taken a while to establish, you know, my first year we had really talented group of seniors. Um, and like, I spent all my time and effort just trying to get the guys to believe that we were good and that we could win. And, um, a lot of things that I wish I could have done or get done just didn't have enough time for. So then going into year two felt better. Um, with establishing that with the extra work, like I'm big on the extra work um, daily. And that's, yeah. that's stretching at night. You know, all of our kids have a checklist. Um, each position has a different checklist, what they should do every single night. Um, and so like establishing that standard, that that is not just, we're not asking you to do that. We're telling you to do that and getting the kids to believe like it, it matters, you know, stretching for 30 minutes while you're watching Netflix, like it really does matter. And so now going into year three, um, and we've got the kids believing uh, that's never, that hadn't been an issue in a while. It's just, you know, remembering where our belief comes from and it's the work, you know, and, you know, we've got a saying around here, the belief comes from the work, the work that God allows us to do. So like, we're very blessed and um, we've got to continue to put that work in so that we can get the results out. And so for 11, you know, when I took the job, um, I, I just wanted to like rebrand. I wanted to, you know, I, I had interviewed um, at, at two other places during this cycle. And for both of those in my head, I had what I would, brand those two places yeah. uh i can't say because i don't want them to steal it uh but you know for moody you come in off 411 um it's a road you know it's called old montevallo road and it runs all the way from montevallo to Asheville, and it turns into 119 once you head you know past leads to 280 where i live and then you stay on 119 and then it kind of merges with 31 and then it actually goes right by thompson high school um, and so anyways, 411, you come in off it and I just, you know, 411 boys st was what started it all. And then 411 football. And then, 
a lot of our stuff instead of the ALL, it will have the 411 for football. And now yeah. what's really cool was it started with us and now it's bled over to the other sports. We got 411 hoops, you know, we've got 411 um softball, you know, baseball, all the all the other sports are using it and, and have taken it and made it their own, which I love. And you see it everywhere, like shirts, um, sweatshirts, hats. I see it in the community. And so last year, my strength conditioning coach, Cam Willis, he texted me, um, was like, man, you know, April 11th, it's 411, you know, we should do 411 day. I remember sent back like a Patrick Star GIF or GIF, whatever you call it, like head exploding. So like <laughs> from there, we started talking about what we wanted that to look like. Well, we go meet with the mayor and the city council and they gave us a official proclamation, which I have over there. And um, that, you know, henceforth, April 11th will be known as 411 day in Moody, Alabama. And so this year, um, you know, we're going to start it um, 7 a.m. I got it on my whiteboard right here. 7 a.m. Yeah. We're, we're paying for coffee and donuts for all the teachers in our in our school district. Um, we're going to let the kids out at the elementary school. And then we're going to read to the elementary school. Um, we're going to have Turner Shaved Ice at the at our campus. We've got three schools here and our elementary school is off campus. So we'll have Turner Shaved Ice on this campus. So kids during their PE will be able to get some shaved ice. Then we've got a coaches versus students uh, basketball game in school. Uh, that, you know, I'll be suiting up for uh, me and my coaches. And then uh, as soon as school's over, we'll have the festivities kind of starting here all over campus. We'll have bouncy houses, food trucks, uh, you know, um, funnel tr uh, funnel cakes, um, carpet eddies, Lulu's, Turner's. We'll have face paint stations, balloon wow. animals. And then what's really cool is um, it, it, it worked out last year as well, but this year we play Leeds. Uh, baseball at 4.30 on 4.11 day. And then our softball team, wow. can't remember who they're playing. It's not Leeds, but um, at, we'll have – so we'll have baseball and softball going on. In between them, you got the inflatable. So it's just going to be a wow. big day for the community. Uh, last year it was really fun. I think I think this year will be even – I know it will be bigger because people kind of like – probably saw it last year and like, oh, man, I didn't even know. You know, so I think yeah. this year we've kind of got it out there and – you know, we're going to encourage all of our kids from K to 12 to wear something moody, uh, navy, gold, whatever you got, because yeah. um, it's a big day. And then even like our our residents that are going to work, hey, wear your navy navy scrubs, you know, wear, <laughs> wear, wear whatever you got, whatever's in your dress code um, to rep the 411. And so we're really, really excited about that. Yeah. How, how big of a deal is that, like something that's born out of – trying to, you know, brand or rebrand, you know, your program, but it's now touching every bit of the community. How big is that for culture just yeah. across the entire city limits? I think it's huge. I think, you know, everybody, you know, everybody wants something that like they feel like theirs, you know, and if you think about certain college programs, you know, you go back to, you know, Alabama, they're, they're the Crimson Tide is their official, you know, mascot, but everyone knows it's got an elephant, right? And so, yeah. like, to me, if you go to, like, a northern state and you show them, like, an Alabama elephant, well, all of us know what that is, but they might not have a clue. Um, yeah. And so that's something, like, in a way that Moody, like, 411 is, like, our off, you know, our one-off. You know, we are the Blue Devils. Um and but we're also the 411 and you know we've kind of claimed our stake and i actually trademarked um anything basically 411 with sports um got that done last year before 411 day um so all that you know we own and we you know all that's run through us and uh but it's really cool because like okay. i'll see other coaches and you know regardless if they're kind of poking at me or not they they know 411 you know they every you know they'll be like oh 411 boys you know or oh a lot of people say 411 you know because they don't know, yeah. like, they, you know. <laughs> yeah. and um coach hood uh from leeds 
um, our first game when we played each other, he um, and, and good and good fun. He put out, you know, the Info Boys, and uh, we got the Info Boys tonight, and so and and I loved it, and I love it because, yeah. um, like you know, like I said, everybody knows, you know, and that's yeah. something I think our community can be proud of and and continue to grow this brand. Yeah, and if anybody anybody who knows Coach Hood well knows all of that's in good nature from him. Oh, he's uh, he's 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 one of my he's always been one of my favorites ever since he was uh when I first started covering he was at uh, he was at Clay Chalkwell yeah and uh, been knowing him for a long time. Oh, he's so a phenomenal, phenomenal coach. Let me tell yeah, you that. Yeah. So. Uh, Year three now at Moody, just yep. in general about the city, about the school, all of that. What's what's been your favorite thing that you've learned just about that community and being there and and that kind of thing? Yeah. So when I took the job, um, it looked a lot different, not just like football, but like the community as a whole. I felt like like you kind of hit on the beginning. Moody has always been a five and five four and six program. And I think, you know, maybe besides softball, I think Coach Seymour is the GOAT and has done a phenomenal job with her program. I think every other program was in a similar, maybe maybe a little better, maybe worse, but similar state as like an average kind of deal. And I think it within less than three years, I think we've been able to, we've reached a sweet 16 in girls and boys basketball first time in history. Um, our soccer team, our girls' soccer team has made the playoffs three years in a row, and our boys' soccer team should, will make the playoffs this year for the first time in I don't know how long. Our baseball yeah. team made the playoffs last year for the first time in seven years. Um, so I, I think that you're seeing the change in the culture for, like, all athletics. And then, like, well, all that does is bleed over into academics. It bleeds over into the community. Our extracurriculars are out the roof right now. Like you should see how many kids we do have to do archery, right? You know, you've got you've got so many kids that just want to be a part of something because hey, like yeah. it's cool to to do that now, right? You know, we've kind of tried to establish that, but we've got a brand new high school. If you drive to campus, um, mm -hmm. there is dirt and trucks. I'm talking about like. I've seen it. <laughs> okay, so it is nuts right now, and they're building a brand new indoor um, hitting facility for baseball at the same time. Softball, Jeez. softball is getting a new locker room, a uh, brand new locker room right there. So you got construction going on everywhere, um, and this is so exciting because, like, anytime you see construction, you think progress. And so when I took the job. Obviously, school wasn't being built, but they told me, hey, we passed this tax, the ad valorem tax. Like, we were the only municip municipality <laughs> yeah. in the county to pass the tax. Yeah. What that told me, I live in Chelsea, where we did not pass a tax recently around the same time, and which I voted yes for because I'm all for students and mm -hmm. making their situation better. But that's another, that's another topic. Oh, I get it. I get um, it. Moody passing that tax, you say, oh, Moody's got an older community or they're like half and half, whatever you want to say about us. Well, we, we're paying money out of our own pocket to improve our kids' education and, right. and buildings and stuff. So like that was the big thing for me that Dr. Walters, my principal, sold me on. And the second thing was the hungry vision of the community. You know, if you go somewhere where the community is happy with being stagnant and or doesn't maybe you're good, like the school is really good, but they just don't want to get any better. Like, that's not me. I'm a builder. And someone told me that a long time ago. I, I can't go to a program and maintain. Um, I've got to go somewhere where I can build. And so that's why you know, I'm here at Moody and I plan on being here for a long time and and trying to grow this as big and as good, you know, as good as possible. But um, that's been like the coolest thing is seeing yeah. like the, the random parent, you know, out at a uh, public saying, Hey, we got a chance to win it all this year, coach, you know, like, you know, no pressure. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, but you know, but I love it because when I took the job, I think everyone was like, Hey, look, I hope we can make playoffs. And yeah. like, I've never once ever, ever will I tell my kids, Hey, we're going to make playoffs. Um, Hey, that's like that. 
that's understood, you know, and I think if you set those big goals, you might not reach them every year. Like last year, I think our kids felt a disappointment, even though we made it to third round, lost to yeah. arguably the best team in the state um, for most of the year. I know they didn't play good against Gulf Shores, but they were a phenomenal football team, and we were up in the third quarter. So I think we were, you know, right there from a football aspect. And so, like, what – how do you get over the hump? Well, that's what – these first three months going into spring right here, going into summer, like that's like what I'm and my staff trying to figure out like, okay, like where we fall short, where was our biggest weaknesses? And then like a big thing that I was taught as a player was make your strengths stronger. And that's kind of a different way to think about things. Like if you're like a slow football team, but you're really strong or you're really big, well, just get stronger and get bigger. Don't worry about you and just you know just lay on people or if you're a fast team and you know well get people in space and and get the ball out in space and uh create ways for your defense to play fast so I think that's something we've done a good job of here is making our strength stronger and that's something we're going to continue to do yeah um I was looking at 2024 schedule since it's (laughs) been about a month ago it's kind of yeah. schedule season for everybody and we've, we've got a lot of fun ones across the state you know just every classification but uh I mean I think the key question here is game one uh which coach is more stylish you or Josh Niblett at Gainesville I think I think coach Niblett's got me um he you is got room uh, to grow though right yeah I I, I got a lot well see my problem is I'm not as uh jacked as he is so I can't pull some of that stuff off I mean like, you know, good for him, man. Like the discipline, because like hell, I'm you know, I just turned 30 and like yeah. I, I just I have a hard time trying to work out. Not anything other than the motivation. I'm just like, why? I can just <laughs> who needs it? You know what I mean? And that guy Yeah, no, I uh, get it. <laughs> but no, and he and he's off, you know, he's a phenomenal coach. Everyone in Birmingham yeah. knows uh really Alabama. Um, you know, just Phenomenal, phenomenal coach. Great team, obviously, open up with. You know, it's funny. I told my coaches, I said, don't you don't ever open up with a Georgia team. They <laughs> start pads in the end of June. And they're in pads all the way through July. They do padded OTAs, um, which I think is pretty cool. And then yeah. they'll play two games before they play us. And so, like, their first game is our first week of practice. And then you have second week, third week. Well, we're doing it. Um, coach reached out to me. Uh, about a week zero, um, which is their week two, uh, I think. And um, and I just – like I had someone scheduled in that game, and I just on the phone, on the spot, said, yeah, oh, yeah, we would love that. You know, I just yeah. – I feel like we're at the point now where, well, I, one, I don't care about my, my record. I don't care if – as long as I make it in the dance, which is the playoffs, that's all I care about. And so yeah. – if this tough out of region schedule is going to prepare me to make a run. And I think we're seeing that with, you know, Nate Oates and and Alabama basketball. I think you're seeing, I think you see that like everywhere. Um, I feel like my, I didn't make the schedule my first two years. The only game that I get out of my second year was Cleveland County, which we got out of when we played the Baltimore Ravens who came down from Bishop McNamara's practice squad. And they came down here and that was the biggest Best, I mean, they were phenomenal, and we yeah. we had there with them. And I promise you, if we didn't play them, Ramsey boat races us. I mean, yeah. it's not even close. But our kids had seen the speed, we had seen some of the size, and game plan wise, it helped us, especially offensively. Know, okay, we're we're not we're not this. So, like, who can we be against a team that's just faster than us and and better than us at a lot of spots? So, um, I'm really excited. You know, we. Yeah. I know some of our uh, community members, you know, I'll, I'll see people around and gain at different games and they'll be like, Hey coach, I, I don't know. You know, we gonna make it, you know, I'm like, well, we're not going, we're not going to war. You know, we should survive. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. It's going to be tough. It's going to be physical, but man, like just think about, we get that bye week Halloween, come back first round. Like there'll be nobody in five A that will have played a tougher schedule to that point. So, yeah. you know, theoretically you should not be the best team. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's going to be, there could be teams way better than us, but we will be the most prepared team. Most prepared. I can tell you that. Yeah, definitely the most tested. I mean, I'm just going to run through these, like just some of these, like obviously opening with Gainesville, 
But then, I mean, out of region, you're at Oxford, you're at Helena on September 20th, and then you get a, what, a short week to then play Auburn out of 7A, and then the next week at center point, and then the next week you host Leeds. Oh, yeah. That's That's a, that's a run. They're like they're calling us Arkansas over here, you know. Yeah. Arkansas <laughs> to get that tough draw where they get like the best of the yeah. SEC. Um, yeah, I, I'm really excited for obviously every game, but um, that little you know that stretch right there is that's something serious. Um, Helena, Coach Busby's phenomenal, a uh, phenomenal coach has a great program. They're going to be physical. Uh, we got to go on the road, and then hosting uh, Coach Etheridge is going to be. Awesome. We did it on Thursday because he's got so many friends and family and leads. Um, I wanted all of them to be able to come and see him. Um, and so did he. And so, like, that was a no brainer. And I mean, they're loaded. I mean, they all, they always are. You know, you can go ahead and I know uh, Mary G has kind of come on the scene. Enterprise is getting better, but there for a while, you know, it was Thompson. Hoover in the semis, Auburn Central. It was like four or five years in a row. And I know there's other teams even in the north that are getting better, like Vestavia and, and all them, and then in the south, like I said. But, um, man, that's going to be fun. I, I just – you know, we've got some really good football players. We've got um, 12 kids with Division One offer. And, like, my kids need to play – like, they need to play good competition. They need to – like test themselves against the best and, um, you know, the exposure for our program, you know, I I would assume that a lot of media is going to be there when we play Auburn on Thursday night. I would assume that a lot of coaches from around the area are going to be there, you know, Hey, you know, they might be asking like, Hey, y'all want to go to the Moody game tonight? You know, and those are the things that I think back on and say, Hey, four years ago, was anyone going to watch, you know, Moody versus Elmore County, you know? And so I think it's, um, really exciting uh, for our program, for our community. And um, I talked to our mayor and our city council um, not too long ago about, hey, like, you know, we're going to have some big crowds. We might need to might need to get some new bleachers, you know. And so I just like to mess with them on that kind of stuff because yeah. anything we've needed, they'd come through. If, it, if our board of education can't take care of it because – of limitations, not because they don't want to, then our city has stepped up. And that's what's really another special part about being at Moody. Like we're a county school, but I promise you we operate like a city school because our municipality yeah. is so strong, because our mayor and city council believe in us, they're there for us. And a lot of a lot of cities won't do that, maybe because they can't, maybe because they don't want to, but our city has stepped up and, and taken care of us. Yeah. Well, you need that full, that full buy-in, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's not just a, you know, you wanting to do something, you've got to have that buy-in from, you know, school boards or, you know, mayors, councils, all that to, you know, teamwork, make the dream work kind of thing, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's, it's really exciting, but man, the, uh, and the other thing is like, let's just say you're a team and, Maybe, you know, scheduling's tough. I know you yeah. you saw on Twitter, um, you know, all the coaches, like, it's funny because <laughs> there's a lot of coaches that were tweeting, like, oh, we can't find nobody. But, like, when me or, like, I know other coaches, you know, I'm not enemies with everybody. So I've got some friends. And uh, we're like, man, we reached out to them. They said they, they were full, you know. And it's just funny how yeah. – coaches are like that because i'll tell you man coaches we're like we're like girls that, like in a hair salon like we you know the rumors, <laughs> yeah. the rumors and the gossip and uh mm-hmm. you know oh he's going here oh he's taking this job you know like i was yeah. you know I, I hell they cleaned my desk out um there in december for a little bit and uh, <laughs> apparently and the, the, the rumor the rumor mill runs wild like like that week, especially during a reclassification season, that week or so uh, after the Super 7, I would say that gap between the end of the Super yeah. 7 and Christmas, yeah. we call that we call that silly season. Silly season. I mean, That's good. I mean, that, it's just, you know, 
you, you see different leaked numbers about like who's going five A, six A, seven A, who's yeah, moving up, who's moving down, who's leaving okay. the job because their team is going from six A to five A and that kind of yeah. thing. And you know, ultimately you end up with you know, you might end up with, you know, if you're talking about twenty rumors, three of them happen. You know that's what a, I mean? No, so that's it's, exactly right. Now, how about that schedule? What if I would have left and left the next coach of that schedule? That would have been the uh, – I mean, that that's like Judas Judas right there is what they would call me, Moody. Um, but, uh, no, it's good stuff. But, um, yeah, silly season. I haven't heard that, but that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're, we're through this reclassification because yes. I, I, I – message after message – uh, different leak number after different leak number, and hey, some of them happen. Like, like I had told, I, I was actually right on one. I, 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 mm-hmm. I got to pontificate a little bit on one of them, and some people were like, "Come on, come on." I said, "Spain Park's dropping." Mm-hmm. Six. Yeah, and people were like, "Good call." Come, they were like, "Come on now, like Spain Park," and I was like, "I'm telling you." I said, "I, I think next reclassification, they might be right back up to seven. Right. But for these next two years, I was like, they're going to be a 6A team. And, uh, you if know. You think, blo- yeah. If you think about the pocket that Spain Park students live, live in, there yeah. is no – I say there's no new development, but I, mean, I could be wrong, but I drive through it every day, and it's just yeah. – they're landlocked, right? You know, Valleydale right. all the way down 119. And um, whereas Hoover can go all the way to Bessemer, wow. you know, Ross Bridge is – I mean, I drove <laughs> there the other day, um, and there's neighborhoods that I just didn't even know existed at the back, yeah. you know, the Hoover School District. And so, yeah, it's completely kind of, it's kind of different. Um, but that was a good one. The one that um, that shocked me um, the most was uh, Helena not going up because that's yeah. just what people – I live in Chelsea, so everybody was like, oh, we're swapping with Helena. Right. And they were able to stay six A, which is great, you know, for them. But they are a growing, fast growing community. Yeah, so, yeah. I, don't know I, I that that one was one that shocked me. I, I think I think just about all of us knew Chelsea was going to drop back to six. Yeah, the rezone forty one. Exactly, and so everybody just thought, you know, is it as simple as Chelsea drops, Helena ascends to take their right. spot? And that's what we all thought. And when it came out that Helena was staying put, I mean, I was shocked by that one. Yeah, but, it, pushed, it pushed Prattville north. Um, yeah, which they're in a no win. You know that's that's tough because like yeah, welcome to the gauntlet. I mean, you know, you stay. You got Central Auburn Enterprise. Dothan is getting better. I mean, their their coach. I really like their coach. I think I don't know him. I just think he does a great job. And so I mean, and then they come up north and they're in the the SEC and. Um, <laughs> with Coach Evans at, at Vestavia and Coach Floyd at Hewitt, obviously Thompson, Hoover, now with Coach Young. I mean, it is uh, – Hillcrest is going to be so, good. Coach yeah. Holt is a phenomenal coach. He's a friend of mine at yeah. Deke County. It, they're, That's a murderer's row. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, let's ra- yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, let's, let's wrap this thing up. I uh, – I, I'm hoping now. Now looking at this schedule, knowing y'all have got a Thursday game, hopefully. Uh, Dude, so the games was on Thursday too. Opening on yeah. Thursday. So two Thursday games. So like you know, like we don't get to you know the the coverage area that I kind of am a part of. We don't get to come out to Moody, uh, you know, weekly or really during the season. And uh, you know, one of these Thursday games, I might have to come come hang out that. on. Come hang out on the sideline on a Thursday before covering something over the mountain on Friday. Y'all come so. on. Um, you know, I've been trying to get Kyle Parmley out here. He just wants to go to softball games, you know, but I can't get him to come to a football game. But he forgets we were we were Blazers together. But uh no. <laughs> um but y'all are always welcome anytime practice or uh, would love to have you for a game would be, would be great. Um, y'all can spin yeah. it, you know, Hey, we're playing niblet. Who was that Hoover OTM? So let's, there you, we got to go. There cover. you go. 
There you go. We've got connect. We've got that local connection. We can do that. Sounds good. Well, I, I appreciate you doing this, Jake, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, see you this fall. Yeah, that would be great. Well, I appreciate it a lot, man, and um, you know, appreciate all you guys do for for high school athletics. I don't think our writers get enough credit. I think it's a thankless job now more than ever with social media and online. You know, with the yeah. newspaper. Uh, I say newspapers, I mean like the the papers like dying. Um yes. you know, but y'all do a phenomenal job. Y'all get our kids exposure. And at the end of the day, I think me and every coach can agree on one thing, and that's that like we do it for the kids and we want our kids to to succeed and do whatever they want to do in life. And if 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 this is gonna help them, that's what we gotta do. So I appreciate you, man. Yeah. No, thank you for the kind words. I'll see you sometime this fall. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jake. See you.